How's it going there, guys? This is going to be my review of the new ZWO CAA. It's a rotator by the team at ZWO, and it's a really promising product. It's been development for a few years, and I can see why. They've made a great thing here. I'm going to talk you through everything I found about it. I am late to the party, admittedly, on reviewing this, so I've taken the approach of just simply using it as much as I possibly can, given the weather here taking down a lot of notes throughout my usage and also searching around online going delving into the forums a little bit and finding out some of the major kind of common questions that people have around these things and trying to answer those as well as dispel some perhaps misconceptions about the usage of rotators too now that there are already a lot of great reviews out there for this I know my mate uh, Queeve the Lazy Geek is going to be doing a review video on this too so if this is out already I'll link to it down below but if not look out for it uh, i'm sure he's going to go into a load of detail too but we're doing these things completely separate i'd just like to give him a shout out because he's such a lovely chap and he's helped me out a load over the years uh, so definitely check out my mate queeve but this is going to be my review and i'm going to dive into it right now so starting off it comes well packaged uh it comes also with a adapter plate for m48 the pre-installed one is m 54 it comes with the hex key that you're going to need to do the swap should you need to as well as also for its rotation lock more on that a little bit later and there's also a usb cable in the box too i have to say the build quality is very very nice indeed it feels like an extremely premium device there's nothing cheap about it even though it is the cheapest of the rotators that i've seen on the market so top marks there they seem to have got a great product out a really competitive price point it's got beautiful beveled edges and it's also got that nice kind of textured finish that we're seeing on a lot of the zwo gear lately such as the ff80 apo the am5n the 2600 air cameras it's a step up from the kind of older just polished aluminium cylinders that we were used to seeing from zwo not that there's anything wrong with them but it is a step up and it's a move in the right direction it feels very nice i think the only minor gripe that i have about the build and it's just a very minor thing uh, i will say is it still uses transfers for the labeling you know like painted on uh i would perhaps love to see if they started using laser etching or all the labeling on these devices as that would make it completely permanent and just looks that little bit more premium than uh, than paint does now in terms of ports it has a usb c socket which i love to see on astro gear stuff that you might have to be plugging in unplugging in the dark it's great that you can put in any direction and it will still work uh, and it also has a hand controller port so if you happen to have or are planning on purchasing one of the eaf hand controllers uh, you can use it on this too and do kind of manual by wire rotation which could be useful in uh, some scenarios now it has a rotation limit in firmware of 360 degrees there are direction labels placed on the unit which i love to see it removes all confusion when placing this thing into your rig so there's complete respect for directionality you, you don't have to worry about it you know which part faces the telescope and which part faces the camera it's a simple thing but it's you know it should be there on everything it's good to see now finally as i mentioned before it does have a locking hole which you have the hex key for i think it's just a standard uh, two mil key or something like that but anyway you're probably going to need this at some point or another if you're like me then you've probably had to deal with no end of seized adapters in some form or another uh, at, uh during your astronomy career so it's nice to see that they've thought about this uh, and that you can actually lock the CAA up if needed and then remove a seized adapter using as much torque as is required sometimes. Now it measures a very precise 16.5 millimeters. So if you've got standard spaces at 16.5, it's a really common size. Uh, you can just take out one of those spaces, pop this in and Bob's your uncle. Everything's preserved, you know, nothing's changed. You can just go on uh without worrying about altering your back focus distance or having to use shims of any kind or anything like that and i know it's not important to everybody but it does come with a full color manual which is still it's nice to see in this day and age it details how to go through setup and usage in an asi air environment as well as touching upon basic usage in the other software options that you have so, you know such as nina that kind of thing or sequence generator pro it also details all of the common installation scenarios that you might encounter such as camera filter wheel rotator etc and tells you about how to install those so again it's a, it's another mark towards removing guesswork and just making it easier for the end user so that's good now once installed 
I have to admit, you know, <laughs> it looks the business. It's in total keeping with all the rest of the kind of pure ZWO setup that I have on one of my rigs out there. So that's the FF80, the AM5N, the 2600R, and now the CAA as well. It all just blends together beautifully. As, of course, it uses a single cable too. It's in keeping with the rest of the incredibly sleek cable management that's possible on that kind of rig and i've said this before and i'll happily say it again it makes every other rig i've ever used previously or am ever likely to use just look a mess like a bird's nest by comparison now on to the general usage notes now one thing i've seen online is there's some confusion around using flats with a rotator so i'm going to try and dispel what's true and what's not here so uh if You've installed everything correctly then all optical elements that would show moats on a flat frame such as you know filters um your camera chamber window or sensor cover glass are all going to move with relation to one another so they're going to stay in the same position so what that means is if you rotate any angle if your telescope has a perfectly centered and well illuminated field you're going to have no problem using flats taken at any angle at any other angle that will work i've tried this on my ff80 for example it works absolutely fine flats taken at zero degrees work at 90. if however you have a telescope that doesn't have a perfectly centered and illuminated field of view such as let's say my quattro out there so it's an eight inch newtonian even when perfectly collimated it for some reason doesn't have a perfectly illuminated field of view. It's slightly brighter one side, slightly dimmer the other. It's not much, but it is there. And I would think in that scenario, you are going to need to take rotationally matched flats. Now, in my unit, there's a small amount of backlash present. Uh, it's not much, but it is there. And I've tried my best to record it and show you. Uh, and that's another thing that causes some concern among people. And I can absolutely see why, because... Uh, let's say, for example, if you're using a very heavy filter wheel and it's an off-axis weight is a filter wheel, right? It's like a lobe. So if you're, uh, regardless of which side of meridian you're pointing, just for example, you're pointing and you're about to make a meridian flip, the weight of your filter wheel is going to be applying, let's say, just for sake of argument, counterclockwise torque against the rotator, right? So it's consuming any backlash in that direction after the flip that direction is changed so then it's going to be applying clockwise torque and consuming the backlash in that direction you would expect naturally there would be a small amount of rotational difference between those introduced by that backlash why it's not a problem however is because you have a rotator and if you're going to do a meridian flip then i'd say 99 percent of scenarios and i don't even think that's an exaggeration to say you are going to be also opting to plate solve after that flip and during the plate solve it's going to rotate you back to the correct pointing angle once again consuming any backlash consuming any flexure even introduced by your dovetail for example on certain telescopes if it's got if it's undermounted in terms of dovetail it can correct out for what it was at the opposite side and put you back it's, it's a good thing ultimately and it's it's largely i would say a non-issue the only scenario where i can see it might the problem is if you had a very very high-end mount something using absolute encoders and uh, you don't have to plate solve after meridian flips you don't have to plate solve at any point let's say you've got a perfect pointing model installed this is a really rare scenario but i'm going to talk about it anyway um then yes it might cause you an issue the the amount of backlash that's present it's not much but it is there and and it might derotate things for you slightly so in that scenario you might have to go back to using plate solving just after and before a flip. And now I think I must give you a word of caution about cable management on this thing. So the CAA itself has been tested with, let's say a five kilogram load by ZWO, and it can do that without deflection. That kind of thing, if it's a heavy off axis filler wheel, it's gonna take a lot of torque to turn, certainly enough to do damage to other equipment if your cables aren't managed properly. Uh, and I discovered this myself and very nearly found out the hard way. So basically what i'm saying is make sure you give this thing some respect in terms of how much your cable positions are going to change throughout a rotation as i've said earlier in the video it can only rotate one 360 degrees it won't keep going around and around or anything silly like that but as long as you've got enough room for it to do that you should be absolutely fine i didn't i thought i had i had not and it consumed all 
of the available cable slack uh, while I was recording for a segment for this video, for this very video. Uh, and if I hadn't been there watching at the time, I think unless there's some sort of inbuilt protection to this where it can detect, you know, an, an overcurrent, you know, too much torque being applied, etc., and stop itself, I think it's strong enough that it would probably damage wherever it's attached to, in my case, the uh, ASI 2600 Air, which would have been a costly, costly mistake indeed. So, um, just please be careful. If you've got one of these, give yourself plenty of cable slack, make sure you've got no snags imminent that could happen at over rotations and that kind of thing i know it seems like a simple thing but i missed it you know what i mean and i'm pretty experienced with astrophotography i thought i'd given it enough i hadn't and i nearly paid the price watch out uh give it some respect now in terms of who needs this uh it's not needed by every setup i'd say if your main imaging camera is a 533 for example it's not going to offer you that much uh on, on a square sensor if however you have you know a standard format sensor uh, four thirds or 16 by 9 format sensor like most of the cameras are nowadays then it's going to offer you a whole lot i think if you're someone who doesn't have much taste for going out and swapping rotation in between targets as i don't these days um i to be honest with you i i opt to pick one main target and set my rotation for that and then everything else i'm shooting is just kind of an afterthought and it'll frame it however it frames it it doesn't have to be like that anymore with this uh and of course one more scenario where it's an absolute must you'll already know this though if you're in the in the business uh if you're going to be operating remote so if you're you know someone sending your rig out remotely to star front or something like that for example um yeah you're gonna need a rotator basically if you're gonna make the most out of your money there um in that case it's it's a no-brainer for me it's a freedom device uh, in that it gives me more control, which gives me more freedom over what I do. And what I mean by that, this is the main selling point, actually, to be honest, for me. Uh, it, it gives you so much freedom that you can have every target you want, you know, in a given uh, time of the year, framed exactly how you want it, night after night after night after night, without any further input from you, once your plans are set up. You know what I mean? You tell it to rotate to zero degrees for M45 Pleiades, and then later on I want it to switch to M42 at 90 degrees or something like that. It's previously something I wouldn't really have the patience to go outside and do over and over, night after night. This will do it automatically, so it's going to mean more quality time on targets. Uh, and like I say, you can do it night after night, so it's going to, it's going to really add up and you'll get more done, I think. At least I will um, for rigs that I have this thing on. So overall, to try and, uh, try and wrap this thing up, uh, I think it's a very nice product indeed. Uh, it's spoiled me a little bit now as I've previously never ever had a rotator and now that I've got one here to use, it's kind of making me think about getting them for my other rigs that could support it too, uh, to be honest with you, because it's such a nice device. It removes one headache it's, it's not really a headache it's a minor inconvenience for me where i place a lot of value on that kind of thing i'd rather be without inconveniences if i can help it and this removes one of them so it's a valuable device to me it's very well made it works with uh, any software i'm ever likely to use it with and it's probably going to be even further supported in the future too uh, as it does have uh, drivers available in ASCOM as well so yeah i'm gonna I have to give this thing and again i'm not paid for these reviews in any way i'm going to give this a top recommendation to be honest i think it's a really good product i'm glad it's finally here it's competitively priced well made and works with anything what's not to like so uh, yeah top recommendation from me on that with that let's like wrap things up anyway and say a huge thank you to you guys for watching my videos and supporting my channel in all the various ways that you do so i want to say thank you to my patreon supporters my youtube members the people out there using affiliate links uh there will be affiliate links for this if you'd like available down below uh you guys make and i mean this hand on heart you guys make such a huge difference to me and my family's life i cannot thank you enough but i'd like to try anyway so thank you thank you thank you it really does mean the world to me and i hope you know it's appreciated it really is so uh, with that, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. I won't go on too long, as I probably already have. I'd just like to say 
happy rotating to those of you out there who have already got one of these or are thinking of getting one. It's a good device and I think you will like it. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video, hopefully under some clearer skies. Uh, anyway, clear skies, guys.